Hi, in this video we're going to talk about the legislation that you might need to know about for the VCE software development exam. There are five key pieces of legislation that I think you should be able to refer to with some degree of ease. And I'm not going to give you all of the information about them. You will need to go away and look at some of these things, um, you know, on paper, on electronically. You will need to kind of have a look at them. So, the first one is the Copyright Act of 1968. Now, the Copyright Act basically protects works that are created by people. You might have read recently, actually, that it doesn't protect works that are created substantially by AI, but that's unlikely to come up on the exam, but just an interesting aside. If you breach copyright, you can actually face fines or prison time. So it is quite serious, and they define it as copyright is infringed if copyright material is used without permission in one of the ways exclusively reserved to the copyright owner. Now, in most cases, the copyright owner is the creator of the work, but if you make a work for hire, uh, then it, it belongs to the person who commissioned you to make that work. So uh, that is important and there's all sorts of stuff you can read up on that but it covers both electronic and physical resources and as you no doubt know lots of people are actually in breach of copyright laws quite a lot of the time. Uh, the next thing that you would want to know about is the copyright amendment. Now that's actually uh, a 2000 uh, Act and that's actually an amendment to the 1968 Act. So it's not legislation in its own right. It passed through the Australian Parliament to amend that earlier law and to make sure that it covered electronic um, products as well, you know, games, songs, documents and so forth. So it is an amendment to the Act rather than an Act in and of itself. Then you've got the Privacy Act of 1988. Now that's also Australian federal legislation. Now the Privacy Act of key interest to us has the APPs, which are the Australian Privacy Principles. And there, I want to say 13, but it might not be, it's around that, um, principles, and each one of those is unpacked to explain how you have to treat data. Now, a question that I see come up is, should I have all of these principles committed to memory? My advice is no. I would have three or four important ones that I could refer, refer to, maybe go through as part of your revision and commit some of those to memory. They're not likely to say, you know, because a lot of the questions on the exam are framed as scenarios. They're very rarely just what is um, APP12. It might be, you know, Kevin is building a piece of software, which APP should he be aware of? And so I just have the main ones about only collecting the data that you need to. Um, people are able to see their records. The records must be kept up to date. They have to be handled a particular way if they leave the country. I'd commit some of those to memory, but I'm not going to spell them out for you here. But I think it's worth having some of those APPs committed to memory. So... Those are the federal pieces of legislation that you'd be interested in. Now, the next piece of legislation are from the Victorian Parliament. So they are um, bills that were passed by the Victorian Parliament into law. And so they don't apply for the rest of Australia. But given that VCE is a um, Victorian qualification, they will probably ask about them. And if they m mention that something is particularly in Victoria, that should be a hint for you that you want to be thinking about these two pieces of legislation. So the first is the 2014 Data, I uh, know, Privacy and Data Protection Act. Uh, and it actually has a set of IPPs, which are information privacy principles. I believe there was an intention to roll the IPPs over to be follow the APPs, but that never actually happened. So at the moment, there is actually a separate similar set of principles for Victoria. So if you're operating in Victoria, you're both bound by the APPs from the 1968 Privacy Act, and you're bound by the IPPs from the 2014 Privacy and Data Protection Act. And, um, and it again, I wouldn't commit them all to memory, but I'd probably go through and... Um, and be able to say, you know, you need to comply with this on the APPs, and very similarly, um, you need to comply with this from the IPPs um, for the Victorian legislation. And the final piece of information that's probably useful for you to be able to talk about is the Health Records Act of 2001, which is again an act of the Victorian Parliament. And that, unsurprisingly, has the health privacy principles, uh, which you need to follow. So you actually could find yourself in the situation, and I'm sure lots of organisations do, where you need to follow... Actually, I would say, if you're running a health business in Victoria, you actually have to follow, be familiar with all five of these. Because um, we take health information fairly seriously. So, again, I'd go through and I'd commit to memory some of those um, key APPs, IPP, health 
things and also some information about what copyright is. Um, and, and actually, not just one, I don't know if this is a fun fact or not, but I did read that the Copyright Act of 1968, uh, that your copyright extends for your life plus 70 years. Uh, and it's automatic. You don't have to go and register for it or anything. So anyhow, there's quite a lot to cover there and you'll probably want to devote a bit of time to it.